Hi everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Caesar Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. And um, as I promised, I'm going to do the astrology of Donald Trump. And um, I figured, I've done his chart before, but just as I've done the numerology and the Kabbalah before, I thought a sort of a, um, just a revisit. Um, to get some themes um, that we need to sort of look at in his chart that are very significant um, for him, for the times that we're in, and perhaps for the reason that uh, he is here uh, for us now. Why have we manifested this man, right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is his natal chart. And we have it right in front of us here. I'm sharing my screen with you. He was born on June 14th. 1946 that was a friday in case you're wondering 10:54 a.m queens new york um and it's got a double a rating from um astro data bank so when we look at a chart um i generally go right to soul and um and do the the evolutionary astrology um way but I think what speaking to you, we're going to just start with just a general view of his chart and what it, as you know, as it sort of hits you, okay, in um, when you look at it, just like what is this, what is this pattern um, without even knowing what planets are there necessarily, just the, the general pattern of his chart. And one of the things that I use um, is I use the asteroids. Um, I put them in as well. And then this right here, um, this symbol here, oh, where are we? Okay, <laughs> sorry. This symbol here is actually um, the Earth, okay? Uh, but we have um, a couple of uh, glyphs that you might not recognize. This is Pallas Athena. She is the goddess of social justice. She is the goddess of wisdom. Um, and he has it in... Um, Capricorn retrograde. Um, this is Ceres. Ceres is the goddess of nurturance. Uh, she is a nurturing goddess, but she is also a goddess associated with grief. Okay, and uh, he has Ceres at uh, at what is it? Thirteen six of Aquarius, right here. Over here we have Vesta. Vesta is um, what we devote ourselves to. Okay. And he has it in Pisces, 2801. So right at the, almost the very end of Pisces. Um, and he, you know, he devotes himself to things Piscean. And that could be um, illusion, sort of delusion. <laughs> um, it could be um, the great dream. You know, there's an idealism to Pisces. And so it's like dreaming big, like, Dreaming that you could change the whole world kind of thing. Uh, big dreams, right? Uh, but also illusion, right? So, so a big dream, yes, but is it illusional? Is it delusional, right? Those might be the questions when you see this in a chart. And of course, we know this in his chart because we know who we're dealing with, right? Okay. Um, and the other asteroid that you're probably not used to, see, or the other glyph you probably not used to seeing is this one right here and this is juno juno is the goddess of relationship she's also the goddess of taking care of those who can't take care of themselves and what's interesting is he has it in in libra in that second house but he has it conjunct almost exactly chiron so there's something about him that was wounded um in this energy of taking care of those who can't take care of themselves. Um, this looks to me like a really deep wound around the fact that his mother could not give him the attention that he may have craved. Okay, we know he had craved it. I mean, may have craved it. He definitely craved it. Um, because of her social obligations, right? She was the, she was the wife of a, um, a rich, uh, you know, a, kind of in, I guess maybe in her day, you know, she was the Melania, right? She was the Ivanka. She was the Ivana, I mean. 
she was the the feminine side of this great you know captain of industry trump and th there couldn't have been very much time for her children in that and i'm not really sure how well she was nurtured she grew up very poor and usually when you're when you're you grow up very poor you don't, you're not nurtured because people are trying they're in survival mode and um so you would equate money with uh with love and attention and i think that because for her growing up so poor that would have been that would have been an attention she 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 cherished because they had so little right you know it's very interesting okay so those are the those are the asteroids so when you just look at this chart there's a couple of extra things on this chart that you normally wouldn't see so if you could just like perhaps not see this over here which of course is impossible but uh and then like look at the chart just put your hand up and sort of look at it you'll see that the majority of the energy in his chart is on this side of the chart right on this side of the chart and uh, you can separate a chart in many ways. You can separate a chart uh, via the horizon line, okay? This being uh, I am and this being the other, okay? Uh, this is more um, introverted. This is energy where we're building something. We're going deep within ourselves and we're building something. You get to this um, this part of the chart, the, the descendant line, and now what has been built uh, gets to be expressed out into the outer world, right? And so this is much more extroverted in a way. This is much more people are noticing what we're doing, right? Uh, but when you have a lot of stuff under here, it has more to do with you developing yourself. Now, he has um, probably an equal amount of being out in the world and developing self energy as if we use this line to, to separate it out. But if we use this line here, which is the um, the IC, which is the, the core, the family, the clan, the, the root of the soul in a way. Um, and then you have Taurus up here. On the MC, this is uh, the pinnacle of success, the pinnacle of success. Uh, I believe that this, his, his MC is close to uh, Algol. And Algol is uh, like off with your head kind of energy. Um, so, you know, I, I've often said that his downfall is going to be spectacular. It's not just going to, you know, he kind of went up with a flourish. He's going to come down with a flourish and, uh, you know, God, God, God help us, God help us and God help his soul through that process. But, uh, maybe exactly what we need and what his soul, um, decided to do, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll volunteer for this. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a, actually a lot to ask, maybe not of a soul, but of a personality, you know, of a personality. It's a lot to ask. Um, okay, so when you have more planets on this side, you tend to be more uh, self-made. There's a self-made quality to you. Uh, you live and die by your own hand. You're not depending on other people when you're on this side of the chart. When you're on this side of the chart, um, there's a lot of relationship issues, right? Um, so this is more about being, uh, sort of fitting into other people's lives. And so with all this energy here, he is going to afford his own path. He's not going to fit into anybody's life, right? Um, you know, unfortunately for him, the, the asteroids here, um, the feminine asteroids are all on that side. And so there is love and there is um there is feeling coming to him right coming from him um i think this could be the base i think this 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 here the series in aquarius in the sixth house could be his base you know the sixth house is the worker right so these are so these are people uh you know the you know the working class we'll call it right uh, or people who consider themselves working class, not necessarily, you know, educated, but more like educated in life, you know. And uh, it's in Aquarius. Aquarius is a collective sign. Uh, it's a group, right? And this is Ceres, the goddess of nurturance. 
And, you know, I was thinking the other day when, when I was pondering, um, pondering this whole thing and I was looking at the tree of life, um, it seems to me as though um, his base, they're so very strong uh, and it doesn't matter what he does that they won't like turn their back on him. I feel like energetically that his base is that which tethers him to the earth. And so to, to go against his base would be to, you know, cut the tie to his sort of life force on this planet. So when we expect him to do that, I think that's, that's a, I think we'll look at ourselves and say, uh, you know, what is my baseline? What, where is the line that I will, I will cross, you know? And in a way, I think uh, he won't, he wouldn't cross that 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 cord that holds him to his face he wouldn't sever that and um and i thought that the, you know the more he feels um attacked the more he feels victimized the more the stronger that victim victim victimization energy that can often be found in that sixth house um it, it strengthens right? It strengthens. So the more he gets picked on, the stronger the love tie becomes. It does become less people because people who just like, I think people who liked him for his ideas or, or the idea that he could change things or, or just like take the, you know, take all the rules off. Um, you know, we'll just get rid of all these, um, You, you have a company, you want to dump something, we'll get rid of all the regulations so you can dump as you like so you can make more money, stuff like that, right? Um, there's that level, those people. And those people are bottom line people. It's just a business decision for them. And so as if he's bringing down the economy, they're gone. But what remains is, is the core, his core followers who feel like they're victimized by life and that uh, they're always being picked on and they're being picked on probably what they feel like they're being picked on for being white, you know, because they feel maybe that they're being, you know, that all the problems of the world uh, for non-white people uh, are, are because of them. And, and that makes them feel even more victimized. It's just a weird sort of victim victimizing thing, which he brings up. And I'll tell you as, you know, through the process of, his presidency for me, a lot of, a lot of pain came up. A lot of pain came up. You know, um, I was uh, adopted as an infant. My mother never got to hold me when I, when, when I, when I was born, they didn't allow her to hold me. I had no bonding time with my mother. So the thought of a, of a child being separated from their mother it's devastating to somebody with my kind of history, right? And then I'm, you know, you walk around my garden, you know how much I love nature. And I think about how he's hurting nature and, and that it's devastating. But what it has done is it sort of helps to bring up all of these things within me, all of these wounds and maybe on some level heal it. I mean, I still want to see the earth renewed and the earth will get renewed that's for sure um but i you know I, so it will happen <laughs> all right i said don't think it won't um but i don't know i just it was all that pain you know and then the the, the pussy grabbing stuff that you know that's you know any woman who's who's lived her life and is and you know has, has reached you know has gone through through puberty and or even younger sometimes i mean knows what we're up against you know it's a different it's a different it's not a safe place when you're a woman it, it's not and when you're when there's not a uh, uh the masculine energy around at least for me um i feel much more vigilant i feel much more i can relax more when i know my husband's around because of that you know that energy but um I don't know why I went there. So what's happening is that we're dealing with in, in Donald Trump, 
somebody who's very he's a, he's a child he's he's a baby um there's you know there's no there's a reason that the balloon was a baby with it with it with a, a phone um in england right and he's he's a baby who didn't get loved by his mother didn't didn't have that didn't have that sort of bonding experience maybe it, instead of love he was given things you know i mean his father gave him what billions and he lost it and he did stupid things with it i mean that's hard earned money right or maybe not maybe not that hard earned but certainly you pay, you you hurt a lot of people to earn that kind of money uh, at least Trump did. That's how he kind of made his money, um, bilking the um, bilking the federal government, and uh, and penny and nickel and diamond, and doing terrible things to uh, minority families. That you know. So uh, when it came to housing, so you know, it's it's a very it's, you know, the fact that you know Donald Trump is doing what he's doing should not be a um, um, should be a mystery to no one, right? Okay, so let's look at his chart. <laughs> Keep doing that. So he has, uh, when you look at a chart, you look to see. So we know that this is a, 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 a sort of a, 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 I'm sorry, a self-made man or appears to be a self-made man. Um, he has all this energy in this, part of the chart. This is being out in the public eye. These three houses are the most, um, public and they're the most collective. He has all this energy there. Okay. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of energy on this side of this, the upper chart here. And this is about your relationships. This is about your relationship, none, you know, um, which is very interesting. So that so that's something else to look at. So we'll look at the chart and we'll see that he has a Leo ascendant, and he his ascendant is at twenty nine fifty five degrees of Leo. So it's very late Leo, and a lot of times um, when you're in those sort of critical later degrees of a sign, things get things can get especially with fixed signs it's like sometimes with a fixed sign i feel like change only comes if there's a break like there has to be a break a break of the tension um with fixed signs so going from the energy of leo into virgo is is a process that it should be, um, you know, little by little things are, things are falling away, but I feel like with the fixed signs often there, there's this sense of something snapping and then everything changes. So, um, and I have, my nodes are fixed. I have fixed nodes at, at actually th uh, 29 degrees of Leo. So in my life, I've had a lot of these situations that, uh, you know, things are going, 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 and then they, then they completely change and sort of like shatter. And then I have to start again and whatever. Part, and, and, you know, sometimes it's, the shattering is a good shattering and sometimes, and so often a painful shattering because when you're dealing with fixed signs, you're dealing with the emotional body. Um, but there's, you know, it's like, all right, let's, this is the next part. This is the next thing you have to do. So you, you move through it and you get over it and you, and you, and, and you use a lot of the rubble uh, as building blocks for the next part of your, um, for the next part of your journey. So, you know, we're always learning and we're always building on our learning. And um, the one thing that excites me the most, I think, is learning <laughs> and then teaching it. <laughs> than spreading the knowledge because what's the point of having it if you can't share it okay so he has a leo ascendant and that means that for his chart the ruler of his chart would be his son okay so where his son sits in his chart and aspects to his son is going to be very important as are aspects if there are any to the ascendant um i want to talk about the sun first because we have the sun up here in the 10th house 
the house of the boss, the house of the president, the house of the chairman of the board, the person in charge, right? The 10th house. He has the sun there in Gemini. Gemini is a sign associated with a duality of black and white, of truth and lies, of uh, reason and intuition. And so these are all sort of the energies, right? Um, connected to um, that sun in, in Gemini. His sun is conjunct the north node. He has a stationary north, north node. That's unusual. The north node, sorry, motorcycle. The north node um, is mostly retrograde. I think like 80 or 90% of the time, the node is, is retrograde in the sky. And every now and again, there's a wobble and it goes direct or it stations. And that's the unusual. And when you have a stationary node, um, you're a little bit more, um, it, you're, it's a rare occurrence. So something energetically, you know, sort of wobbles it. And there's some sort of maybe forward, forward energy with that. Anyway, so we have the stationary node, and, and, so, and, and your success comes later in life, you know, or your, your, your success or your, your, your imprint, right? Your imprint on the world comes later in life. All right. Um, and we also have Uranus here, right? We have Uranus in Gemini. So that's a lot of Gemini to have, okay? But it is his north node. Uh, his son is conjunct his north node. So he's actually supposed to go in that direction. To a certain extent, this, is a, this is, could be a faded, um, you know, aspect or, or look at somebody. If somebody didn't know Donald Trump uh, and just was looking at a chart and trying to discern stuff, we could see that uh, he would come in as a, uh, a leader. But uh, breaking, breaking the, um, the rules, like this is a leader who would break the rules because of Uranus. And on some level with the North Node there, it was part of his destiny. And the North Node is in Gemini now. Okay. And so we're, we're, we're all experiencing this collectively. He's going to have his uh, nodal return this year. And it's happening on like a day or two before election day. North Node on North Node. Um, when I see Node stuff, um, it usually means like something ending in something beginning, right? Uh, I've had a few clients who, uh, who've had people in their lives uh, and even themselves when they've come to a, a point in their life when they had a choice between living and dying, uh, I've seen uh, the reverse nodes. Your north node is on the, 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 na the natal north node, the, the, the transiting north node is on the natal south node. The transiting south node is on the natal north node. So it's flipped. And when that happens, uh, there can be a choice around living or dying that I've seen in, in as far as um, um, my experiences with looking at transits of people um, who, have, who have either had, who have passed or have had challenges. Um, at a particular time in their life, life and death challenges, right? So, all right. Now, um, so that's pretty, that's pretty powerful. And he has Mars in Leo. Mars is, is Mars is very powerful in Leo. Um, Leo has, um, has a sustaining power that the other fire signs don't. Um, and so it, it gives Leo um, um, a little bit more of a steadfastness and maybe a little bit more of a slow burn, you know, maybe doing a little bit more damage because it can burn, you know, that much, that much uh, longer. But he does have it in his 12th house. And your 12th house is your house of undoing. If he was, if he had this Mars on this side of the chart, ow, that would be, that would be very, that would, it would be worse. It would be worse than it is. In this respect, we have Mars in the 12th house, the Pisces house. You know, who's to say that his soul hasn't come in with his Mars here in this, in this place? Uh, as like, you know, like, oh, if you want to go to the next level, you got to do this hard thing. 
you know, in this life. And, uh, you know, so who knows? I mean, I, it's possible. Um, you know, when he first got in, I was devastated that there were those people who were talking about him being, um, you know, this is exactly how it's supposed to be and this, that, and the other thing. And I couldn't see it, you know, but, you know, maybe they, they had a clearer vision because they were less attached to it. You know, I definitely had my attachments to the stuff, which I kind of talked about before. So I guess depending on how attached you are to the things that he's hurting, um, you know, somehow is a test for you with him, with him there. I don't know. All right. So let's see what else. So we have his son, his moon. Okay. Is, uh, 20, 21, 12 of, um, Sagittarius conjunct, of course, South node. He was born on an eclipse. He was born on a full moon, lunar eclipse, blood moon. Okay. Um, when you have the moon conjunct south node, um, there's still some emotions that you have to deal with in this life from the past. Now, <laughs> making America great again, uh, that's, you know, that, that's what that's about. You know, going back to the past, things were, things were great. Things were, things were very idealized. Um, Sag can be I very idealistic. So he has an idealized of the idealization of the past, right? And it's very, it's very much an energy that, of his experience and his beliefs because we're dealing with fire, single pointed fire, right? One thing about Sagittarius is, is that they're sure of themselves, especially Sagittarius moons, because your moon, when you express your moon, when you're feeling attacked, uh, your moon will habitually, you know, like your, your habit patterns come out, usually come out under stress. Um, you know, part of our journey is figuring out those habit patterns. That's why astrology is very helpful because it helps us to see the patterns in our lives. So we have a little bit more agency with them, you know? Um, all right. So what was I talking about? <laughs> Sag moon. So he's very sure he, and very, this is very idealist part of the past. And perhaps part of his journey is to realize that in fact, that wasn't the case. Like, but I don't know if he'll ever get there. Um, it may not even matter. It may not even matter at this point. Um, so this is a know-it-all. Okay. And it's in the fourth house, right? This is family right? This is family dynamics, mother-father issues, okay? Um, this is mommy didn't love me, daddy didn't love me, and daddy was never there, or daddy was idealized. You know, it's hard to know. It's kind of hard to know. Uh, I don't, I haven't done research on him, so I, a lot of my knowledge about his, his growing up is in, in a way supposition from what I see in his chart, but I have heard things similar, right? All right, so, uh, so he is here to be a, a, a rebel or to break something down. And it's Gemini, so ideas, thoughts. Um, and we can see that he's, he's doing that in a way because he's making us question reality. I mean, I, not me, right? But, you know, he lies the truth the lies if you say it enough people believe you people don't check the facts you know he, that's what he does and that's kind of what he's doing he's kind of blowing all that like let's be logical and reasonable and go through the, the right process right he's just blowing through all of that and in a way he's he's like a pluto in 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 capricorn energy as well because he's 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 demolishing all the structures you know, he just wants to be at the top of the mountain and have, you know, total control or everything. He doesn't care about levels and who's and what's this and what's that and who has the right to, to push down on somebody else. You know, uh, you can only go this far because this, you know, that kind of like the way the government is, is, uh, is, is, is set up, right? Is structured. 
and he's blowing through a lot of that stuff. And perhaps that's part of the, the Pluto in, in, in uh, Capricorn energy that we're going through. We have to see what holds water and what doesn't. And then we also have to see what do we really value about this? Because now um, the planet of uh, change and transformation is in the sign of values. So our values are getting blown to smithereens, like long held things. But with that comes a new awareness. With that comes a new awareness. Okay. I was, this was supposed to be a thing on Donald Trump's chart and I think it's becoming something else. So we'll just go with it and <laughs> see. All right. This was, I was, what I was trying to do, let me, let me be clear. What I was trying to do was do a little like tutorial on his chart and why I think things are like that. But what's happening is that's happening and that other stuff seems to be coming through that feels like it needs to come through. So we'll just go with all of this. Okay. Now, um, what's interesting, uh, we have the second house here. Now, the second house is resources, okay? And we have the planet Neptune in that house. And Neptune is, uh, fogs things up, right? It obfuscates. And so, and so there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. In fact, it's, there's not a lot. It's all, Neptune is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all like, imagine, like, did I see it? Did I not see it? Um, it's a place of, right, nebulousness. You know, everything sort of dissolves away. And, and it's in this house of money. So I'm not surprised that his father gave him $4 billion and he lost $4 billion or more than that, whatever, you know, however, you know, because he, it's, it's, it's more of an idea than an actual thing. And if you can say, oh, I am a millionaire and not have to prove it, <laughs> then you can get along with the facade. You can get along with the farce. That's this, that's Neptune in that second house, right? Now we talked about his, um, his Juno conjunct his um, Chiron in the, in the sign of um, relationship, right? Libra. But this is also sh social, you know, the social stuff, you know, being a good, you know, being beautiful, like he, being beautiful is very important. He has to have a beautiful wife. Um, you know, those things, you know, how you look matters to him. Um, because there's a wound there. It's like he, there's, he's, he's very wounded there. And so chances of him getting, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know his relationship with Ivana. I think that was probably a decent relationship. Uh, but you know, then maybe not because he screwed around on her like, constantly anyway. So who's to, you know, what am I, who am I to say? Um, but there is, there is definitely a wounding um, that he expresses. And then we have Jupiter here and he has um, lucky, you know, relationships that bring him money. It's also Jupiter is foreign places. So I'm not surprised that he would get his money from foreign places. I don't know, Russia or you, the Ukraine or, you know, who uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, whoever has money wants to give it to him. He's going to use it and play with it. It's what he does doesn't matter that he's president of the United States. He doesn't care about that. I think what he cares about is that now he's president of the United States, so now he can boss more people around. And that's why he wants the military so big, because he, he wants to make sure that he can, you know, keep pushing the envelope when it comes to bossing people around. But of course, that's not happening now, right? Let's take a look at, um, let me see. Okay, I'm going to take a look at his chart and what's going on now at this time, because I think that is very telling. Okay, I'm gonna do a buy wheel here. Sorry, I'm doing a little, let's see, here we go. And this, let's do the rally. I have a, his rally coming up. So let's look at that. This, things will be, you know, close. The stuff I want to look at anyway. So uh, this is Donald Trump, and this is his rally, the Trump rally that's always changed. It was the 19th, Juneteenth, and then he changed it because somebody said, uh, you know, you, you, that's one, that's one too far, right? Um, but but he kept it in Tulsa where they had the massacres of, of the of the Black Wall Street. So uh, he had, he left that, 
like like that black people and adolescents and make lots of money black wall street that has to go there's a symbology there right there's a symbology there it's not just it's not just that he's a you know white supremacist and he's doing it for his base his white supremacist base not that all his 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 base is white supremacist but the base that that's there um i think it has more to do with his you know not wanting uh blacks to thrive financially right it's symbolic of that okay so what's happening like you know we talk about him wanting to do everything and be and 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 take and um be the, the you know the the, the, at the top of the world, making all the, making all the, having the biggest guns and the biggest weapons and, and, you know, bought the big, the biggest bully ever, the billi biggest bully on the block, right? Um, that's what he's sort of manifesting. But what he's, what he's coming up against, here he has uh, his, his Saturn and his Venus. He has that in a conjunction. This is a challenging conjunction to have Saturn and Venus, especially in Cancer because this is someone who feels unloved and unlovable. And because it's in his 11th house, it's, it's 11th house is often associated with wounding, right? Trauma, it was very, very traumatic for him, okay? And now, at this time, we have Pluto and Jupiter and Pallas Athena, which is uh, social justice. Social justice, the law, and big business all in an opposition to this very scared and tender cancer energy here in the 11th house. And so oppositions bring awareness, right? And oppositions bring a sense of stopping. Things stop with an opposition. It's like, it's, it's like you have to take the time to like balance and, 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 and focus the awareness on that. And so we're all sort of focusing the awareness on that with him. Um, and there is another aspect that I, you can't see here, but right about here at 24 degrees of Aries is the planet Eris. I don't know if you've heard of Eris. Um, there are people, um, what's her name? Um, oh my God, I can't think of her name. She's a PhD, she has a channel. She did a, a great thing on Eris, Eris and Zena. I can't, I want to say Pamela, but I'm not sure that's her name. I'll put a description below. I'll put it on in the description below. It's definitely, it's great information. You probably already heard it because I know that people who watch her tend to watch me as well. Um, but I, Ensworth, I think. Anyway, I'll put it, I'll put it in the descriptor. She talks about Eris. And then uh, Henry Seltzer out of, um, uh, San Francisco wrote a book on Eris. Um, so there are people, um, Planet Waves, um, Eric uh, Capolino, Eric Francis. Um, he's done a lot of stuff uh, with Eris. So it's really an interesting archetype. Uh, and there are astrologers out there who have, have done a lot of work with Eris. But Eris is the, the goddess of discord, and she is a rebellious energy. She wants to rebel against the status quo and use the status quo's own pride against them. And she is in his eighth house, right, squaring this whole configuration. And so this is the break, I think, that I was talking about. This is the... Um, that sense of you know going to the edge and having something having to break before things can change it's not going to be a soft smooth um you know shift and so something has to come down something has to, to fall and you know it could very well just be trump he could just fall he could take one for the team and we as a country and a world don't, doesn't have to go deep into a the, into the depth of the rece recession that we might have to go if he you know if if things just sort of are held i don't know how else to explain it um so who knows again i don't know this stuff's just sort of coming out as i'm speaking um 
we also have here, now this is for the 20th, so this is a couple of days from now, but uh, we have Mars here coming on his Vesta, okay? We have Vesta in the sky sitting on his Mercury, his Mercury in Cancer. You know, Vesta puts focus on, and we have his Mercury focus on what he says, on his lies. This is actually uh, the chart for the, um, for the rally. And I, I was saying, because I was, I, I was using this chart um, for my, my ongoing astrology class that, that goes on um, from my, my students here in Massachusetts on, uh, on Tuesday nights. Um, I guess if, you're, if you know astrology, you could join us if, if you were interested in that. I can, um, you just have to email me. And, and you know, we could do, I do it every Tuesday night, like 7 to 9. Um, Eastern time, but um, it's what he says at this rally is going to be very important. Now, I'm not one, now I don't know what he's going to say, and I don't have any illusions of grandeur about what he's going to say. I don't think he's going to be, you know, I don't know, you know, is he going to call in the KKK? Is he going to ask for conciliation and actually change? I don't know. That's not, I have no idea, but I do know that whatever is said is gonna be very important and it's gonna be hard for me to, to listen because it's hard for me to listen to him. Usually when he talks, I have to shut it off because a lot of it is, you know, a lie. Uh, but I think I'm gonna listen and, and, you know, I'll get back to you on how that was. Yikes. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, what else is going on with, with him in this chart? So the big thing, I think, is this, this T-square uh, between Pluto, Jupiter, Pallas. And we, we have to include um, Saturn here and Aquarius, you know, the pressure of the collective, uh, you know, uh, we need you. What What are you going to do? We need somebody who can lead and you know help us through this very challenging period in our in our country. And he's like MIA. He's he's in a bunker, you know, in in the White House that's surrounded by a cage. Uh, that's that's messed up, right? It's just messed up. Mars is in conjunct Mars as well. You know, this, this in conjunct is a Scorpio side in conjunct. And this is about having to let go of a feeling or an emotion. This is death and rebirth here. Um, so, I don't know. We are at, we are, you know, and of course, you know, to add, to add it, everything to everything is the next day like that we have, um, 19th like juneteenth right you have that after you know all these black lives matter protests yeah um and afford the unfortunate uh, death of, of george floyd then we have this rally on the solstice point and then the next day we have a total solar eclipse on the solstice point and this is all sandwiched in so this is a powerful powerful portal of change and transformation and when i did the the, the june uh, 20 the june 2020 astrology and kabbalah that's what it said this this, this is a 10 one this is the wheel of fortune fate is spinning the wheel so uh i say the best thing you can do at this point is just vibrate what you want just doesn't matter what's going on on a certain level just vibrate out what it is that you want your life to look like do you want to be healthy do you want to be happy do you want to be protected do you want to be just put that light around yourself and then if you if if it's okay with your higher selves put the people that you love within that bubble of thought and as things sort of you know things happen that becomes a protection and also I think to a certain extent, a little bit of a, um, a blueprint 
so that when things settle down and things get where you get on the other side, we have a starting point. I, one of the things about the Black Lives Matter and all these um, protests that's so different. Um, and when it all started, I remember watching and I, I didn't realize that there were some riots going on, but I remember the riots from when, when they happened in the 60s. It was a scary time. And I remember my parents being very scared and upset because I lived in New Jersey. So it was right, you know, it was in the middle of it kind of. And, um, but, but and, and so it felt very different because I was very young. But this, it's like it, it, people were angry, but then they stepped back from it. And maybe it was the nature of George Floyd and his work uh, through his years, right, uh, with his community. That sort, of, that sort of was just enough that people sort of stepped back and said, wait a minute, this is an opportunity for us to build something new. And I think that this whole, like, even though we keep pushing and pushing and the envelope is getting pushed, that the fact that people are facing this in kind of a peaceful and let's defund the police, let's, let's get the police, let's have them stop doing stuff that they don't want to do. They can do what they want to do. You know, they can, they can uh, police or they can protect and serve as they should. And we'll give, you know, the mental, you know, people with mental problems, we'll give them, uh, you know, somebody who can help them deal with their, their problems or if it's a drug problem, we'll have them, you know, go to some sort of uh, program where they can, get off of drugs and, and, and reclaim a life. And then other programs where there's actually a life to reclaim. I mean, these things are, these things are perfect. Like, like not perfect in that it's gonna perfectly work, but this is the kind of thing that we need. We need support for the grassroots. We need support for um, the foundations of a new earth and a new world uh, and not fall into the abyss, not you know come down like Trump Tower, right? Uh, that the whole world has to come down like that. You know, it's interesting in 9 11, um, the eclipse that's happening uh, is the same eclipse. I think it's my, my, my tonic cycle. I don't know if it's the same exact eclipse, but I know there's 19, every 19 years the eclipses um, repeat themselves. It's a metonic cycle. And um, this was before 9-11. And then in, um, so there was, there was a, uh, an eclipse on the solstice, the, the cancer solstice point um, in 2001. And then by September, we had 9-11. So this is that same sort of series of eclipses. And at that time, two towers went down, right? Wouldn't it be interesting that now one tower comes down and it just has to be Trump Tower. That'd be interesting. And I don't mean actually come down like it did 9-11. I'm not saying drive your plane into, into a building. I'm talking metaphorically. Metaphorically. Okay, so let's see here. Um, okay, so I think that, I think I said enough um, today but I do want to look at his solar return as well. But I think I'm going to do that in a separate video. These videos just seem to, I get inspired and then the next thing I know, it's like a half hour, an hour, to 50 minutes. So I'm going to stop now. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a little different than I was intending, but I think everything works out. Um, I did put a lot of personal antidotes in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I find them myself. That's how I learn about astrology. I like, you say, oh, this and this and this happened to me. And I look and see what happened in the stars, you know, uh, cor observation, correlation. That's how you do astrology. And so I'm just observing my own life and correlating it to the planet. So I use myself a lot. So oh, sorry about that. For those of like, some people love it. Some people don't mind it. And some people hate it. So whatever. All right, guys, like and subscribe. If you would like a reading yourself, you can contact me. There will be links below. And I'm going to link to um, Heather. Heather, that's her name, Ensworth. Where did Pamela come from? Anyway, um, I, I'll, I'll link to her video as well so you can take a look at that. And um, all right, love you guys. Take care of yourselves. 
Don't forget the big bubble, big bubble of love around yourself. As things fall apart, um, you will be protected and you'll have a place to start when things settle down. And it's not going to take that long for things to settle down. So don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I think the people are on the rise, guys. All right. Take care.